tell me as a woman of color, it would not matter what I did, my motive, my talent, my ability, and my character would be constantly attacked. First thing they say, oh, she gonna play the race card now. But no, God, isn't it them who's playing the race card when they only question one? And that was Fulton County District Attorney Fannie Willis claiming all attacks against her and Trump prosecutor Nathan Wade are based on race. Willis is accused of having an improper romantic relationship with Wade. She is now facing accusations that she paid her alleged lover $100 more an hour than an expert RICO prosecutor who was also working on the Trump case. Florida Congressman Corey Mills is sending a letter to the Georgia State Bar, formally demanding they investigate Willis's relationship with Nathan Wade. Here now, the man himself, Florida Congressman Corey Mills. Congressman, thanks very much for being here. I want to get to your letter, but I also want to get your uh, reaction to what you just heard from Fannie Willis. Well, I think that it's very obvious that she's going to continue to try and utilize the race car as a way to uh, get away or abate her real issues. I mean, the unethical and unprofessional conduct that she displayed, the fact that there is corruption and potential collusion, even with the Dems and the Biden administration to have election interference and impact President Donald J. Trump. I think also the fact that she could have been financially benefiting from this additional spending with Wade in her romantic uh, rendezvous. And so I think there's a lot of things that needs to be unpacked, and I want Governor Kemp, and I want... Uh Yeah, we're going to talk more about that. Uh, Corey Mills uh, on the House Foreign Affairs uh, Committee. I know that uh, you sent a letter uh, to the governor of Georgia, Brian Kemp, trying to get him to interfere. Uh, Todd Pyro, at, at this point, we're waiting to see if Mills has heard back from the governor. Your reaction? You can hire a special attorney who is versed in a particular area of the law for situations like this. But typically, that attorney has an extensive history in this instance in RICO cases, right? The attorney that was hired, i.e., the paramour, alleged paramour, if you will, of one Fannie Willis, has no experience in that, has no experience in trying cases. And so you have to ask mm. the question, why? And then once you get the assumed answer, why, you have to get to the heart of the corruption. And if I'm Trump's attorney, yeah. I am playing this card because out of all the cases, I, 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 they're all politically motivated. But if I'm ranking them by the ones that Trump legally has the most concern about, it's this one. So if he can knock it out now, yeah. I think it would be to his benefit. And, and Cheryl, to make the connection to her benefiting from that a um, higher pay for Nathan Wade. Apparently, mm -hmm. there are reports they've gone to the Bahamas and mm -hmm. Florida and all of these trips uh, where, uh, uh, you know, they're connecting the dots that he's being paid more and, and they're using the money for that. And I know that Corey Mills mentioned all of this in the letter. Uh, have you heard back, uh, Congressman, from uh, the governor of Georgia? Uh, no, we've not heard back from Governor Kemp, AG Carr, or anyone. We're hoping to follow up with them in the coming days. But again, Governor Kemp has to have a willingness to ensure that his Department of Injustice is actually able to step up and do their jobs and do it in a legal proceeding way that doesn't have the unethical and unprofessional behaviors that was discussed in my letter. Yeah. Uh, underlying Department of Injustice. I like that. Let me switch gears and ask you about all of the uh, hostilities that we're seeing across the world. The Biden administration is putting the Iranian-backed Houthi rebels back on the terrorist list after the U.S. military carrying out another attack against the Houthis on Tuesday struck anti-ship ballistic missiles in Yemen. Uh, tell me what you believe would be the proper response to all of these attacks on U.S. servicemen and women uh, across the Middle East. We're now at, I believe, 138 attacks against U.S. forces. Well, that's exactly right. And as you know, Maria, the only reason that the Houthi rebels was actually delisted to begin with is because it was a policy that was made under the Trump administration, very much like he removed Remain in Mexico and other things that were working ineffective. You know, the bottom line is that look at how quickly this is starting to escalate. Just last month, the U.S. Navy had engaged in the very first kinetic direct attacks between the Houthi rebels and three vessels within the shipping lanes. Now we are looking at having to make direct attacks on infrastructure 
to eliminate multi-ballistic missiles that have a mid-range capability. But the problem is that we're continuing to treat the symptoms without recognizing the disease, the disease there being the continuation of helping to fund and export oil out of Iran by not upholding sanctions by of Iran, but also not addressing China's relationships to Iran. That's also exacerbating the situations in the Middle East. And so we have to look at this mm. from a linked geopolitical analysis and not singularly as if this is a one-off attack. Uh, meanwhile, the uh, 911 call uh, from Lloyd Austin's home has been revealed, and I want to play it and get your reaction to what has taken place. Of course, we know that uh, the Secretary of Defense is now out of the hospital. Here's the 911 call. Fairfax County 911, where is your emergency? Uh, yes, ma'am. It, it, so my name is, and I work for, and I am requesting an ambulance to be taken. Can I can I ask? Like, can the ambulance not show up with lights and sirens? Um, we're trying to mm -hmm. remain a, a little subtle. Congressman, your reaction. Well, he wasn't trying to remain a little subtle. He was trying to remain secretive. This is an individual yeah. who failed to uphold his duties. And he basically vacated the seat without letting anyone know. Even Deputy Secretary Hicks, who was on vacation in Puerto Rico, did not know that she'd assumed his duties. Now you've got five to six days that we don't know what the incapacitation was for Secretary Lloyd, while we are seeing these increased attacks that we just talked about. We talk about the idea of right. not just striking and attacking the Houthi rebels, but also the fact that that shipping lane carries 12 percent of global trade, a majority of that for the United States. So this is an attempt to also disrupt us. And so. I have, you know, mm. submitted my impeachment articles long ago in August of last year. I think that the uh, the Republican House needs to take up these articles of impeachment, and we need to go forward with a dereliction of duty hearing. I think that we can look at the 2021 Afghan botched withdrawal, the failure to get status of forces agreements, the 33,000 recruitment deficit, and also his inability to allow the administration to know what's going on as reasoning for us to take this up and impeach him with bipartisan support. All right, Congressman, we'll be watching your work. Thanks very much. Corey Mills this morning in Florida. Stay with us. Thank we'll you, be right Maria. back.